everything. So AK Malsami and Associates is a complete uh, corporate law firm. And we are here in service for about more than 58 years plus over. And we have our offices based out of in Chennai, Bangalore, Mumbai, and Coimbatore as well. So the founding and the managing partner is Mr. A.K. Malsami as well. So he is the, um, I would say, the one of the most prominent lawyers in the southern aspect of the country who specializes in company law as such. And the firm as such, if you could see on the slide, we specialize on both litigation and non-litigation as well as a lot of transaction services. And we specialize on areas of corporate intellectual property rights, commercial laws, civil laws. And also we focus on a lot of contracts, restructuring, mergers, acquisitions, and uh, so on. And all. Uh, the most unique aspect regarding a firm is the kind of partners who we have on board who give complete uh, knowledge-based and complete solution based The solutions which they provide on to the clients are exceptional because we have judges, eminent ex-judges who are on board with us, as well as we have senior advisors from every walk of industry. So we are able to provide a complete and comprehensive solution to our clients who come from various industries. And most and uh, other key aspect is on the aspect of creating awareness initiative. I have launched the Lottery Magazine, which is an online magazine, which we circulate on monthly basis. It's a free sub subscription, as well as the magazine called as Quixi. Here, if you see, it is only a one pager where it is more of a one minute read, where all the legal updates are given to you, especially on the IPR aspects as such. Now, coming on, to the topic of uh, the introduction of intellectual property rights. I'm sure that all of you have heard about IPR so many times in your career, so many times everywhere else. Now, what is this IPR as such? Now, intellectual property rights as such is nothing but it is a bundle of rights, I would say, where it talks about the creativity, the concepts involved in it, the kind of inventions, the industrial models, the trademarks, the songs, artistic work, designs, symbols, where it includes brands, images, which are used in commerce. So all these together, we would say as a bundle of rights, like any other right, like the way you own a property or you own a car for yourself. Any aspect of ownership, when we have, which we see, in any kind of tangible form. Similar to it is the intellectual property right. It is also a very, very important right which gives you a complete ownership for the creations which you have come across and also which it gives you an exclusive monopoly. And also more than anything, it gives you the creation recognition that it has been created by so-and-so for your creation as well as for your invention. More than that, it is. it also gives you a lot of valuation for this intellectual asset once you start to register it and you see that you protect your asset. So there is a lot of commercial valuation which is attached to it once the registration process takes place. Now the question is, now, why should we go and register this intellectual property, right? We have heard that we can do it later on or in the later stages. We are only in a beginning stage. Even before you start to do something, even if you have an idea in place and if you want to hold certain discussions with even your vendors or so and forth, we generally ask you all to be aware of it even before disclosures of ideas are done. Because a lot of ideas are being carried away by the rest of the people whom you have discussions and they make use of your idea and come up with the product. And then you are left out saying that, oh my God, I this was my idea, but they have taken it from me. So generally as lawyers, we always recommend to ask people who have ideas to be very careful with whom discussions are being conducted even before a discussion is started. It can be your family members, it can be your friends, it can be your trustworthy person, but be very careful before you share any ideas 
or concepts which is part of your creation so that it is being protected. And this protection even before a registration can be done is by signing up a non-disclosure agreement. That's what we generally advise people to do. Now, the reasons for this protection, one is this, which I told you. The second thing is to a large scale, as you are all on a faculty members, you know that it is also important for the economic growth of the country. Intellectual property assets promote a lot of economical growth of the country because it is a brand in creation. It is a service in creation. And once there is a registration given, there is a weightage given and it promotes the economy of the country as such. Plus, it also gives the consumers the most important aspect is saying that there is a kind of, say, safe purchase where the products are guaranteed and you know that if it is coming, say, from a very known brand, say, for example, from Hindustan Lever, today all of us know that Nestle or Hindustan Lever, products coming out of that right from to toothpaste to right from, say, for example, even detergent powders or to the food products which are coming out from a company, we know that it, we give a lot of weightage to it because it gives you a certain amount of guarantee as well as a safety for your purchases. Plus, it also drives a lot of competition in the industry because one tries to beat the other. So it is a healthy competition. So these are the most uh, important factors which will help once you start to know why it has to be protected. More than that, it also gives the ownership a protection. The person who has created this entire property or this entire innovation gets a lot of protection, rewards, especially encourages a lot of entrepreneurs, people who are filing in as even in the aspects of trademarks or copyrights or even in the aspect of patents. A lot of people encourages, encourages them to get into an entrepreneurial venture using their marks once it has been uh, protected. <laughs> Excuse me. This protection not only helps you in the domestic market, it helps you also on international market when it goes into the aspects of exports. So it is a large industry. Believe me or not, IPR derives the majority of commerce in today in our country. Without these protections, it is very difficult to take it forward. In the slides, as we move on, I will explain to you how these things are done. All right. <clears throat> now, the next one, if you see, uh, the which is right in uh, front uh, in. Sorry. Sorry about it. Uh, I'm just trying to, are you able to see the slide? Hello? Hello? Yes, ma'am. All right. Yes, Sorry. Ma All right. Now, the protection of intellectual property <clears throat> as such. How to protect your intellectual property? Now, protection of intellectual property as such is only in the aspects of one is registration. Now, this aspect of registration itself is a cumbersome pro uh, aspect because today a lot of people think it is available online. We can go ahead and file it online. It is very easy to do. But please understand, before a registration, there are a lot of other aspects which has to be covered, like corroboration, whether it is truly, it is viable for a registration or not. That a lot of search has to be done with the uh, authorities, with the uh, concerned intellectual property authority, where there are marks which have been already published. And we ensure that these marks have to be given a thorough search to ensure your publication is safe even before you start to register. So we have to we give you a guideline on whether this can be done, not done. So it is very, very important. And also it is important to ensure that once a registration process is done, 
tracking of any kind of any unauthorized use is important. So as lawyers, we will be able to track because we do this as a day-to-day -day job and see whether there is any kind of infringement or whether somebody else is using, trying to use a mark which is kindly similar to whatever you are trying to register. So the next one as well we are uh, talking about is checking for deceptively similar marks in circulation. So deceptively similar is nothing but even the slightest resemblance, like for example, a shape of the bottle of a parachute oil may be having the same shape can be used by somebody else. So even that is a deceptively similar with using a little bit of a the uh, possibly a change in the little bit of the blue color or a little bit on the logo. So any kind of decept uh, deceptively similarity in circulation also we will be able to check. Plus it is also important to keep a tab on the renewal of your marks once it is registered because it is not given for an entire period. There is a time period depending on under what class or under which, whether it is under Copyright Act or trademark or where you're going to make your registrations, there are time periods which are given. So it is also important to note that that particular time period has to be, our tab has to be kept on that so that you don't lose out on your renewals. Because once if you don't renew, what happens is you lose the complete protection of the mark and you have to start your process once again from the beginning. What happens is you may be using your mark even prior for say 20 years or 15 years or how many other years maybe. But then it is a cumbersome process for a business uh, person or a, a corporate entity to go back and start and redo everything from the beginning. The one more aspect is it is also important when you're giving a franchising, licensing or an assignment. So if you franchise your mark, it has to be protected. How much of protection? There are terms and conditions which are given when you do a franchising or when you're getting into a licensing aspect or assignment is when you're asking somebody to use. A lot of people use it. Like, for example, Palamudur Cholai, we see the uh, where you see these uh, Palamudur Cholai used extensively. But there we know there is certain Kovai Palamudur Cholai has its own franchisee agreements. Same way, Hot Breath has its own franchisee agreements. So the logo, the mark, the color associated with it gives them a franchisee benefit where they can also commercialize to a lot of aspect. All these things, commercialization can occur only when your marks are registered and protected well. Otherwise, it is very difficult from a business angle to make a commercially viable product or service to be given. So as I told you, it is the same thing. The importance of the registration as I've covered extensively, it is investment, it is your time, it is your money, and also to ensure that your creativity is protected and ownership is given exclusively to you and not to anybody else. Now we are going to see the types of intellectual property right. So in the beginning, I told you that uh, it is a bundle of rights. So intellectual property is a huge umbrella. Under that umbrella, you have patents, you have trademarks, you have copyrights, you have geographical indication in which in short, we called as GI. You have industrial designs and trade secret. So one by one, I will take you uh, take you into the concept of what is a patent and uh, what is a trademark, right? Now, I think most of the faculty, since you are all aware of the patent, because I think most in your university, most of them would have started to file patents if it is on the science department or agriculture or various fields, wherever it is. Now, what is this patent as such? Now, you should understand patent is also an exclusive right which has been granted to the inventor or to the uh, assignee to prevent others from commercially benefiting from their own invention without their permission. Now, the definition of patent is nothing but it is an exclusive right granted for an invention. It can be this invention has to be very novel. It has to be new. It should not be in the market before. So it can be for a product. It can be for a process. 
which will provide in general if there is something new going to be done or it offers any kind of a new technical solution to a problem. So please understand, innovation is very important. It has to be very novel. It should not exist prior in this market at all. It can be a product. It can be for a process where you are going to have a patent for it. It Also, it can be in a way of doing something new. For example, there are also today, if you see, there are uh, people who talk about inventions in medical field where they talk about a process in the scanning equipments. There are process which are different from uh, one uh, entity to another. For example, people have invented to the extent of having today even these, uh, there are ready-made dosa makers today where you pour the batter and it comes out on the other end. So these are all new Patents. In fact, I saw the latest invention is about how you can extract oil in your own in your own kitchens by using a product which has been patented, where you just pour, put the groundnuts, or if you put the sesame seeds or any seed, your oil is extracted out. So to this extent, patents are given for products where the innovations are completely new. It is can be a product, it can be even a particular process which turns out something new to a product, all right? Now, why do we have to have, why do we, what is this importance of this patent rights in our country? Now, you should also understand patent right, it is given only depends upon the territorial jurisdiction. If you have taken a patent right for our country, it applies only to our country. It is not a blanket protection throughout the world. Because in India, if you see, most of our intellectual property rights are governed on international basis also with protection where we have entered with various treaties. Like you have the Berne Convention, you also have um, the, um, uh, um, uh, what would I say? I'm sorry, I'm forgetting some of their names. I think the most important is the Paris Convention, the Berne Convention, and also the International uh, Protection for Patents Agreement and various treaties. So these are the some of the most important treaties where our country has also entered with the other countries and other um, uh, with the World uh, WIPO, which is the World Intellectual Property Organization. So please understand these are territorial rights. When you register in India, if your re restrictions or your protections is only to the extent of where you have registered. If you want to register throughout the country or in, in European Union or in America or in other parts of the country, we have to check the applicability of that law and what, what treaties we have signed with, which will be uh, applicable, all right? Now, what are the importance of patent rights in India? Why do we have it? Number one, the patent right is granted only for a limited period of time, that is 20 years from the date of filing. And it gives you the territorial right, as I very, uh, very clearly explained to you. Next, second thing is, it is also enables the patentee to have a material benefit, which is, it gives you an entitlement, which is the ownership, also, it gives you a reward for your intellectual efforts. There is always an effort uh, made in any kind of creation. So it is a creative process or it is an invention. For that, it also gives you the weightage, giving you an ownership, plus also helps you to benefit, meaning on a commercial uh, scale process, on a large scale commercial process. Plus, sometimes you also get royalties in case if you're giving it, you're licensing it, you're franchising it, or whatever the agreements you are entering into, various other companies which are required or they're interested to get your uh, patented product or your service, you get into a commercial aspect. So where you will be commercially paid and you will enjoy the benefits of your invention once a registration is done. Plus, it may be also used for a lot of aspects, especially in the field of research or for experimenting. Even those in those aspects, a lot of royalties are given to the people who have registered on the patent aspect. And I also spoke to you about how you can protect, protect once the um, uh, patent is registered so that you help it helps to protection not by others copying it, infringing your right, so it helps a lot in protecting your own innovation and creation. 
Once this is done, no other person can come and infringe and say, I have done it, or this is my product, or this is this is what I have invented. If you foresee someone, if you are able to see somebody is using your product in the industry or in the market as such, you are very well entitled to go and file for an infringement suit or to claim your rights claim for damages. Some of these damages when you file in the court of law are exemplary damages which will be given to you, especially if the company is huge. The compensations paid for the owner as such is tremendous. So it is always essential that your product or your service is protected in the area of patent. And the grant of patent right by the government does not mean that the government itself would automatically enforce the patent right. So if a government is also giving you a right, it doesn't mean the government will take care of things. It is you as the owner who has to defend, who has to watch out for your innovation or for your product. Now, what is the right as such for a patent owner? Now, the right for a patentee is that the right to prevent others, as I told you before, from using their process or using their product, either in the aspect of offering for sale, selling, importing the product in India directly or outside the country as well. <clears throat> and next is we are talking an interesting aspect about utility models and what are the rights. Now, all of you would have heard about this utility models. Now, utility models are something which will get into the market even before you start to apply for your patent as such. Because getting a patent is a cumbersome process. It takes a lot of time. Now, utility models are tested in the market to see whether this machine or this process can it be used you want to do a research how how viable this can be so a short term patent is what we will call this where they give you a protection for this utility model in the market this is in fact faster to get little less cumbersome than the patent product uh, patent aspect as well because in patent all the technical aspects are involved before you go in for a registration and it takes time but in utility models, if you see, it is very fast. They want to know what it is actually, how it is going to benefit, and you test it in the market as such by applying for a utility. So it is called as more as a short-term patent. And it is generally used mostly uh, by the local inventors as such. So it helps them to progress. It helps them to also increase their commercialization aspect way before they get into a patent as such. Now, the rights which are given for the utility model here is it is only for a limited period of six to 10 years from the filing date. So in general, I would say that utility uh, protection it means that the invention cannot be commercially made or used or distributed. It cannot be imported or sold to others without the consent of the uh, utility uh, owner. You know, if you file for a utility model without your concern, no commercialization, sellings or anything can be done. Now, next aspect is about what is the difference between the patent and utility uh, model? Now, the requirements for acquiring the utility model, as I told you before, are very less stringent than the patent. But here again, the novelty aspect has to be there. If there is no novelty in the aspect of a product or on a process, then it will not be considered as a utility uh, uh, model as such. In practice, the protection for this utility model is also sought for any kind of innovations for rather than any kind of incremental character which not meet the patentable criteria. Please note that. And here also, the term of protection for utility models is shorter than that what is given for the patents as such. The next aspect is why is this utility model so important in today's context as such? See, once you start to take a utility model, uh, you file for it. What happens it, it, it is from the fact that most of the social welfare enhancing inventions are cumulative in nature. And a number of them are sub-patentable as novelty, as inventive step requirements, which are too high for the whole aspect of patent as such. 
So it is very, very important to have the utility model uh, done way before even a patent will go in, especially in today's time. So that it is, it gives you a safeguard in inventions, which are in lower in cost for a certain period of time, rather than the cumbersome process of patent. So even before you go to file for a patent, it is always advised if to go in for a utility model to show that you have an idea of the testing of the product, is there something novel of this? Can I go into it? What is the scalability if I get a patent on the aspects of commercializing your business as such? In case if I'm going too fast or if you're not able to understand anything, kindly feel free to stop me. I will be more than happy to explain. Now, the other aspect is on, if you could see the trademarks. Now, we have heard of so much about trademarks. What is this trademark? What is it actually? See, it is anything which we see today in our day-to-day -day life. Like I have shown you on the screen very clearly the pictures which depict of what we see today, different types of trademarks. Now, it can be any sign, it can be any design, it can be a word, it can be a combination of words, logos, it can be for products or services. Only using these names or combination of these logos, we are able to differentiate in our market, which is which brand or which is which product. Until then, we don't know which is what. So it really helps us to distinguish in the uh, market from one brand to the other. That is the basic meaning of a trademark. <laughs> and also a trademark, it can be located on a package, it can be a label, it can be on a voucher, it can be a product or it can be a service as such. Now for a product, I'm sure like on the screen, I have showed you there is Coca-Cola, <clears throat> there is Volkswagen, there is Mac computers, Apple is a product today. Good stuff, Cadbury's is a product. So all these are product, but there is also something called as service marks. Now, what are these service marks? The services which we give can also be trade, can be protected. For example, <clears throat> um, say for example, the logo of my the law firm, AKM, it is a service mark. It can be protected. Although, and also the other thing is Urban Ladder or Uber. These are also comes up, Urban Ladder is they give you certain amount of services. So it is also considered as a service mark. So all these things fall under the law of protection of trademark. And you need to understand the trademark to be registered. It must be very distinctive and not deceptive, illegal or immoral. So these things are not allowed to register. Now, a trademark is nothing but it can be a word, like I told you, it can be a name, like for example, um, any name can uh, say, for example, Archie is a name. So that is, it can be a name, it can be a logo, only the logo, the McDonald's arches show there, clearly this, that logo, in fact, if without McDonald's, if you see that mark, that golden arches through day, throughout the world, we know it is McDonald's, even the name is not required. That is the power of a logo. And it can also indicate the origin of goods or services, which also enables the customers to distinguish either their goods or their services in the trade or in the same business as such. Now, what are the types of trademarks? Please understand, it doesn't mean there is only one trademark and everything falls under. When it comes to filing of trademarks, it is always done in a combination of clauses so that the mark is being protected to a large extent. Not any mark cannot be registered or protected. There are certain rules and regulations for that. Before you go ahead with the creation of a logo or creation of any mark as such, it has to be searched and researched a lot in the uh, government with the registries to know whether it is viable to get you a trademark or not. Now, the types of trademark you see, there are word marks. Now, the word mark as such, if you see, is Coca-Cola or Calvin Klein. These are all called as word mark. There is also something called as a device mark. Like I told you, the McDonald uh, inverted arches are called as the device mark. Also, the Nike's tick symbol, the swoosh, 
symbol is also called as a device mark. And the half bitten apple on Mac or on any Apple product is also called as the device mark. Now, word mark with a combination of a logo also can be done. Like, for example, Nike with the tick and say, just do it. It is a combination mark. Same way in McDonald's, if you say, uh, I'm loving it, that is also a combination of word mark with the logo. Then you have something called as even sounds can be protected today. Sound mark is something which all of us are aware of. For example, in Netflix, when you switch it on, there is a certain kind of a jingle where the ta sound comes in. That can be also protected. Same way in bullet, especially bullet has got a very nice sound. When you have a bullet on, it gives you a dud dud sound. Even that can is being protected today. Next, if you see, you have a pattern mark. Even patterns can be protected today and uh, uh, to a large extent. For example, Tiffany's box. The Tiffany and Company is a jewelry which is throughout the world sold. The pattern on that box can even be protected to a large extent. Positions of a particular mark also can be protected to a large extent. Where you position your mark in a box or in a carton, if you see on uh, really on top, you would see that the red, uh, the pharmaceutical company called Stada has used a position in a particular manner where in their box of their medication, the mark is given. So that positioning also gives an importance. Same way, for example, the shoes which have red soles. It is throughout the world understood when there is a shoe with a red sole under, underneath, it is called as Christian Louboutin. The positioning even of a color, you can do it on this, can be registered. Color marks, various colors of combination, red and yellow, Maggie, the kind of a purple registered for, for, for Cadbury's. And also Barbie pink, we say, the doll Barbie as such, the pink which is given. And also the hologram marks are there. For example, Google, the way Google is written, it is a hologram mark. Then you also have something called as the multimedia mark, especially in the field of entertainment. Now, for example, the MGM Lions Road, it is a multimedia mark. When you open the phone of Nokia, when you start and on it, there is a handshake to it and the sound which comes. That is a multimedia mark as such. Motion marks, if you see. The display of the mobile in Sony, there is an orange color kind of a ribbon which moves and it floats around. That is called as a motion mark. Even any kind of motions to a large extent can be protected once registered well. Now, what are the benefits of registering these marks? One is it helps you to advertise your trademark. It becomes a very effective instrument to attract uh, customers and to also acquire goodwill from your customers. Brand distinction is created once a registration is done. Otherwise, people are very confused. Who is who? How do we differentiate products? How do we know from A to Z? Is this Cadbury's or A? everything is chocolate? But how do we differentiate the marks? only by having a brand name, by logo, by colors, all these things. And also it helps you to extensively market your product, uh, extensively make the uh, public to understand which category it is. Is it food? Is it services? Or what product you're trying to sell? It becomes very competitive in the market as such. And it gives you an exclusive ownership. <clears throat> Plus, people are able to identify your product even without a name today. So if you see the Coca-Cola bottle anywhere outside, even without the cola inside, if you see the bottle anywhere out, you know it is a Coca-Cola bottle. That is the impact once the registration is done. Now, sometimes your marks also will be uh, rejected because the registry is very particular because there are certain rules and um, uh, rules to be followed and certain clauses which has to be looked into. Now, once your mark, we first before you register, you have to see whether it is whether it can be registered, whether there is any other existing mark prior used, which is deceptively even similar, where if you use, if you go ahead and just start to filing without making a basic research, your mark will be objected and it will come back. And also the registry is very particular on the way these marks have been filed. There's a methodical manner. There are hearings which has to be held 
if there is any kind of grievances, those have to be also addressed. So it is not a very simple procedure as people think like, yeah, it is available online. I can just go ahead. Definitely, you can go ahead and register the marks, but then you will lose out on time once you know there are a lot of rectifications when it comes back. You will not know how to rectify it, what has to be done, how to benefit out of it. So it is always best to seek a professional's guidance or help before any kind of registration is done. Now, there is also like any other, like the way for patenting, we also have licensing of trademarks. It gives a permission from uh, the trademark owner, which is the licensor, to the licensee to use their trademark on any kind of mutually agreed terms and conditions. And it also gives you uh, not only, uh, what would I say, it helps you to develop your business to a large extent. So a franchisee is not restricted only to one place. You can give it sitting. You may be an owner who's having a shop, actual shop, say in Chennai. But if you give it, get into a licensing agreement or franchising agreement, you will be able to give it anywhere pan India to use your mark so that your business is developed, your product is known, throughout pan india as well as um, probably some of the cases even throughout uh, across the globe now the other important thing under trademark is there is also not just individual marks which you can register there are something called as collective and certification marks so you would have heard that a collective mark is a mark which where it will distinguish any kind of goods or services which is associated with a particular association of undertaking. Now, for example, agricultural associations are there. They will have a particular mark. So farmers from various areas throughout a country, length and breadth, will go and register there. So that will have a particular mark which is being given. For example, in copyrights, if you uh, the next slide which I will talk about on copyrights, where you can um, copyrights is nothing but music or lyrics. There is copyright society or owners for where copyrights can uh, the society or organization as such has got a certain uh, mark to it. There, individuals can go to these associations file along with them for a copyright protection. So here it is not an individual protection. Here it is a collective effort which has been taken by the association as such, which will help you to protect your mark or your product or your service. Now there is next thing which you have heard a lot is the certification mark. This I'm sure a lot of us are very, very, uh, uh, it's very common and a lot of us are aware of it. Certification marks are given like, for example, ISO standard, we say it is a certification. Then we say there is a silk, genuine silks, there is a silk um, uh, uh, mark or certification given to the original silks from the government of India. That is a certification mark. Certain products, in fact, for example, wool, which is there throughout the world, there is an wool, ball of wool symbol, which is shown uh, in a lot of products. It says that it is, again, a certification mark. So it certifies it is a service or it can be a uh, product where certification is also given. It is called as a certification mark. You can certify and say, this is good. Uh, you can I vouch for it. So these are called as certification marks in fact it gives you a lot of uh, trust it gives you uh, what would i say it gives you the quality it gives you an assurance and accuracy and other characters for example iso to a large extent once a company is certified with iso you know that there is a certain methodology which is followed in any kind of iso products right <clears throat> sorry Next, as I told you all, we are going to talk about uh, copyrights. Now, like trademarks, now we have something called as copyrights. Now, what is this copyright as such? Now, copyright, like trademarks, we talked about for trade, for commerce, logos, marks, and etc. Now, what does this copyright act as such deal with? Now, Copyright Act, if you see it, as I can clearly, the uh, PPT also displays for you, what all the things copyright protects and what all the things copyright doesn't protect. Now, the domain for copyright is any kind of literary, artistic works, which may be having writings, musicals, works of any kind of fine arts. It can be paintings, it can be sculptures, any technology-based works such as computer programs and any kind of electronic databases. 
all these things only fall under copyright and they can be protected. And it also refers to a legal right. Once you start to file under copyright, the same like every other right, exclusive ownership is given to you. Now, as I mentioned earlier, even sculptures, architectures, choreography to a large extent is protected. Motion pictures can be copyrighted. Sound recordings also can be copyrighted. The other important aspect here is it means that the original creators of these products, anyone who gives any kind of authorization gets only an exclusive. The owner gives gets the exclusive right here other than anybody else. And the same way, you also can benefit by giving any kind of, say, for example, uh, um, uh, uh, licensing to them or any royalties also can be collect, uh, can be given to the owner once you enter into an uh, agreement with the concerned person as such. One more important aspect is when it comes to certain aspects of uh, textile designs or a certain aspect which is related with fashion. Here under copyright, you should understand if a, a pattern or a design has been repeated more than 50 times on a large scale for an industrial use, the ownership of copyright defeat is defeated. So it is very much important to understand where and when copyright can be filed and for what copyright cannot be filed depending upon the usage. If it is in a textile industry, if it's in the fashion designing, the requirements are completely different from copyright. Do we do it on the copyright or do we do it under the design sack? That is something which I would also elaborate on the later aspect. Same way, why should I get a production for copyright? One is, as I say, it is your creativity. It is your right. It has come out of your hard work. So you should have a sense of belonging and ownership and also to ensure there is no infringement cost for your um, copyright which has been registered. It gives you, gives you more motivation to create more work. It also gives you an exclusive ownership like every other right. Now, for certain aspects, copyrights are not protected. For example, ideas, any kind of facts or data or any kind of concepts, methods or principles, discoveries, names or titles, these or any kind of short phrases, copyright will not be we will not be able to get any kind of protection under the copyright acts as such. Also, please understand anything which is commonly used, like for uh, symbols like stop sign or, for example, uh, any geometrical shapes which are commonly used, you cannot get any kind of copyright protection as such. Now, there is something called, even under the copyright, meaning of fair use or fair dealing. Now, fair use supports any kind of socially laudable purposes. Typically, uh, it is like not exclusively involving the use of any copyrighted work of a, uh, by a second author. So for example, if there is any kind of use which will benefit because of this author's work, it is going to benefit the society in a large extent, then it is called as a fair use. Fair use is not a license. Please understand, you will. it is not at all a license, but it is only a privilege which is given to you by a virtue of which whoever is taking the defense against a suit of infringement can definitely escape from the clutches of this copyright law. Now, there is something called as a concept called as fair dealing. Now, fair dealing is definitely permitted. It is only for some kind of private use. Say, for example, a research is conducted, experiments are conducted, or if there is a movies, generally if you see movies are previewed, preview show is done for movies only for exclusive people who are from certain uh, industries, film industries, or who are critics. That is only exclusivity which is given or showcased to certain uh, people where exclusivity is given so that they can write a review or they can critique about it. That exclusivity, it is called as fair dealing. Even sometimes the orders or the cases which are published in newspapers, that is also given on the aspect of fair dealing because it is for the public knowledge. This is the concept of something which is called as the fair dealing. <laughs> Next, we see <laughs> infringement. 
So infringement as such, I would be dealing to you all in the end in a, com in a combined aspect of infringement of all the um, uh, aspects, whether to trademark or copyrights and uh, patent as such. Next, we will move on to geographical indications and trade secrets. Now, this is a very, very important aspect which we are dealing today, uh, every day, in fact, you see this GI today to a large extent. What is this GI? What is geographical indication? Now, geographical indication basically is given to any kind of a product which originates only in a particular, particular geographical area. See, when we say particular geographical area, say, for example, the mangoes which are depicted there, Banganapilli. Banganapilli mangoes come only from a particular region in Andhra Pradesh. So it is given, given a GI tag for it. So for this GI to get into, there are certain aspects which has to be fulfilled. For example, you have to prove that there is a different climatical condition. The soil capacity where the product comes from, it is different from the rest of the places. You cannot cultivate it apart from one particular place. Basically, the watering aspects. Also, the nutritional aspects which are coming out of this product is completely different and unique uh, than the other aspects, which is other mangoes, for example, which I was talking about, which are coming from length and breadth of the country. So it is very, very important to get a GI tag the product has to come from a particular geographical area where it covers certain uh, elements and certain it shows, should show the uniqueness of the product and distinguish it from the other products. That's when a GI tag can be given. The qualities are important. The characteristics of this product is important, whether it can be banana, it can be a, a, a mango, it can be a beetle leaf, it can be anything. But the characteristics and the qualities are very, very important to establish the aspect of place of origin to get a GI tag. Now, the other uh, important thing here, as I've showed you, is the certain um, examples I would like to take you all, which is uh, shared on the screen, the saffron, kungumamuku, that is from Kashmir. Nowhere else can you get kungumamuku. Today, we know saffron comes from uh, only from Kashmir. A GI tag is given for that. So this helps in a lot of commercialization of the aspect once a GI tag is given. In fact, a lot in the aspect of exports. It helps people to export with a GI tag. Once you have a GI tag, it gives you credibility throughout the world, length and breadth, saying that this product is cultivated only from here and nowhere else. I think many of you would have known that there are a lot of there were a lot of uh, discrepancies and cases which were debated between the US and the Indian government where they said turmeric is from US but turmeric is being used in our country from from our ancestors time so there is no way they can say that turmeric like erode manjal it comes from a particular place they can't say or claim it saying that it is my product, it is US product. No, it comes from here. So there was a hard fight for that saying, and we clearly established that turmeric is being used from generations from us. Same way the basmati rice, which is being used by us. So then this gives you the, uh, the credibility, the authenticity saying that it is only cultivated and it comes only from a particular region or the place from our country. For example, if you see there is uh, kalamkari, the Kalamkari saris or the prints which come, it comes from Andhra Pradesh. It is a Kalamkari art. A GI tag is given to it. Same way when we talk about tea. Today, everybody says Darjeeling tea. Why Darjeeling tea? It comes only from Darjeeling and there is a essence and credibility given for it. Same way if you see the Veena, Tanjavur Veena we said. In a Tanjavur Veena has the GI tag for it and there is a characteristic and quality to it. Same way, all these things you should understand, there is a lot of characteristics, quality, weightage is given once you get a GI tag in place. Also, why should we get a GI tag? One, it, it confers you the legal protection to uh, clearly say it arrives or comes from India. And also it prevents, like I explained to you, any kind of unauthorized use of uh, this product from any other country. And it also boosts 
the export of our country to a large extent. The next aspect which I want to talk to you is about uh, what is this trade secret? Most of us have heard about trade secret. See, trademark is different. Trade secret is different. Trademark is logo combinations which I explained to you, which you can differentiate. But trade secret is something where it is used to commercialize the product and it is kept in a very confidential aspect. It is not showcased to everybody. For example, the formulas which are used to create Coca-Cola, Pepsi. Pepsi tastes different from Coca-Cola. So that formula is a trade secret. Say, for example, the Kentucky Fried Chicken. The recipe used for the fried chicken of Kentucky as such comes from Kentucky. That recipe is, is a trade secret. Nobody else knows it and it has to be protected. And it is protected so that there is a commercialization done. Only when a commercialization is attached, then it is called as a trade secret. <clears throat> And it has to be limited only to a group of persons. It has to be kept confidential. And it is scaled to a large extent on a commercial basis. Then only it is called as a trade secret. Now, like any other right, the rights of the owner here also gives you the right to prevent anybody from infringements without your control, without your, without anybody, without, uh, uh, you know, uh, what would I say? It gives you exclusive rights so nobody infringes into your product as such or into any kind of your trade secret process or formula whatsoever. Now for GI, the GI is not an individual tag given. It is a tag which is given to by the government and the government keeps the hold on the tag because it comes from a particular region. But this tag will benefit people who are in this sector who are using this tag to export. For example, if your product is using cashmere saffron and if you put cashmere saffron and the GI tag is attached to it, it gives a weightage to your product. Same way when you're exporting products, for, for example, the Banganapali as such, when it goes to export in the country, outside country, it gives a weightage because in the market, because there is a GI tag attached to it saying this is original and it is not duplicate. All right. <clears throat> Now, the next aspect is something called as industrial design or what we called as the Designs Act. Now, what is this industrial design and Designs Act? It is called, <clears throat> it is generally comes into the ambit of anything which is related to the aesthetics and the ergonomics of the product, the shape, the size, how it looks, how it is designed. It can consist of three dimensional elements such as certain product shape. You can see the evolution of Coca-Cola bottle here, how it was initially designed and how it has evolved to the current extent. See the evolution, the shape of the bottle from then to now. So it shows you the element of three dimensional elements can be present. It can be the product shape, it can be either two dimension, it can be any kind of graphics, it can be patterns, it can be colors, all right? In industrial design as such, you should understand the design is applied to any kind of the physical product which has been manufactured to a large scale. For example, a chair in a certain way, which is shown there. Say, for example, some of these chairs which are seen, if you see in Scandinavian countries, especially uh, Denmark, which is extremely famous to bring out furniture lines which are sleek and classy. They have protection on industrial designs. The way the product looks, the simple sleek lines. So it is very clearly people can uh, differentiate wherever the product is so, uh, sold. If it has got a registration done, then you know that it has got, uh, uh, I mean, under industrial design, you know there is a protection which has been given to something like this. So as I also told you, it also has, gives you the definitive of craftsmanship, exclusivity, how it looks, how it is done. All these things falls under the aspect of an industrial design. You should also understand that when it comes to certain aspects of textile designs or fashion design, 
there are always a confusion between copyrights and industrial designs or designs act how do we where do we register so that i will tell you in a very basic giving you a basic idea when you register something under copyright on designs say a pattern or something there is a protection which is given to you for about a period of 60 years wow that is wonderful ma'am but please understand if you start to produce it on a large scale to commercialize it say if you repeat the design on an industrial aspect or commercializing aspect 50 times if it is repeated you lose your ownership it goes to your public domain so if you look into that aspect you do not get a protection but any original work of art or anything literary work gets a protection there now under design act if you see protection is given to any design a garment where in total where it can be the seam stitch together the way the flowing of the garments or the entirety for example the sabayachi courtier as such has an entire registration and it is one of the highest registrations in india as as such where if you see on design aspect they have the highest registrations which are given to protect the totality of the garment including the designs all right so that is the aspect of designs as such now as i told you all before the benefits are the same as such as any other uh, ip where you have the exclusive right it helps you out to fight in case of any infringement it gives you a great commercial value because your design of the article is becomes the unique selling point as such and it also gives you a weightage in the market because your design is different from the other person's design and in when you register under the designs act as such the total term of design protection is given as for a 15 years period with little extensions which varies from case to case as such so this is what i wanted to talk to you all about on the aspects of industrial design as well as the copyright aspects as such now there is also something called as a grace period which is given in the cases of a uh, novelty now what is this novelty as such novelty is something where there is something unique or new say for example it is a kind of a privilege which is granted to the designer to uh, uh, for a design which will enable them to predict the market success like i told you in the aspect of patents where i talk to you about utility models the same concept is there is a uh, the same concept here is given as the grace period for any kind of novelty to disclose so here if you see the designer of this design can apply this design protection within one year after the publication of your design so you should understand under this concept of novelty you can get into get into that concept take a grace period will be given to you where you can test your product in the market where you will get a the uh, protection for a particular period which is called as the um, uh, this period is called as a, a grace period for novelty and it is somewhere it ranges between about 12 month period uh, preceding the date of filing of your uh, applications and such right now very interesting aspect we have done with dealt with registrations knowing our rights of all these intellectual properties which are around us now what are the concept of infringement now i am registering you are saying i am the owner but what is my benefit ma'am after i register on all this most important aspect is to help yourself from infringement so nobody else comes and uses your mark because you have established yourself in the market well and it is your is a well known trademark or it is a copyright or it is a patent or anything under the ip rights now ip right infringement as such is it is giving you a one is if you register the protection how can it get uh, how do people uh, uh, infringe your marks like on the display if you see here phone pay mobile pay it is very confusing people will think oh phone pay is the same thing that is the company which came probably mobile pay is also part of phone pay they will think same way if you say there is something which has come as big basket is known to all of us there is somebody who has used similar thing called as daily basket it is definitely a case of infringement 
So these kind of combinations or riding on somebody else's mark, we generally call in trademark as, um, you know, passing off or counterfeit. These are very technical teams, uh, terms which we keep talking about in the cases of infringement. Now, trademark infringement, as I told you before, it is nothing but any kind of identical marks or which is confusingly similar to the registered trademark, which is already in the market. Phone pay, mobile pay, big basket, daily basket, etc. It confuses you a lot. Same way, for example, the uh, when a product is placed in a supermarket in a same way, for example, like I told you, Maggie, uh, noodles packet and also there is say for example another uh, brand packet for example anything we will coin it say for example uh, um, for example soupy or something like that there is a brand if they are going to use something similar with the name or the style or the logos combination of the colors and they keep it in the market in the shelf close to Maggie itself when you are hurry to pick up something you want to pick up Maggie but you get confused in a hurry you pick up the other product so this creates a lot of confusion in the product in the market as such and it also means that somebody else is also trying to ride on to your mark or your brand so that is called as infringement in when it comes with trademarks. For example, I would also say you is Microsafe or Microsoftware. All these things are very, very confusing and identical. So people get very confused. <clears throat> Next is on the, aspect, uh, on the aspect of the um, copyright infringement. Now, copyright infringement is also similar where you have not asked somebody or you have not authorized anybody to use your mark, your copyright, which has been protected, you have the ownership. And if you don't give them an authorization and they ride on it and they start to use it, saying this is my work of art or this is my painting, this is my sculpture, my innovation, after they see you and they copy it, then it becomes an infringement as such. So you, unless you have given them the rights to, uh, you know, to uh, reproduce it, to distribute or to display certain works, it is not allowed. So it is always important that uh, the uh, consent is taken from the owner and you have correct agreements in place. In fact, to the extent of, since we are all using social media to a large extent today, Photographs which are being used, clicked and used today of somebody else's work which is being shared, consent has to be taken. Without consent, it is infringement of copyright. In uh, abroad, especially in US and European countries, they take it very seriously because you have to give the consent or you have to credit that this is so-and-so's work and I'm using it. In fact, in Instagram, if you have taken a look, most of them, uh, when you post these pictures, there is also tunes added to, which is the uh, songs which come in. The songs, if you see, if you're going to use particular song, if you don't click on what is given and if you start to upload and use it onto it, it will pull it down because you have to give due credit saying it is from Sony or it is this artist, say for example, it is S.P. Balab Subramaniam's credit is given or Ilai Raja's credit is given or uh, uh, if it's a Western singer, for example, Taylor Swift or Lady Gaga, the due credit to the person who is owning the copyright has to be given. Otherwise, it is complete infringement as such. <clears throat> So that is about the copyright infringement. Next, for examples of uh, uh, on the uh, design infringement as such, if you see here. Now, as I told you, even the design aspect is the same, where if you're not given permission for anybody to use your design or to reproduce your design, it is, and they take it from you and they, without your consent and knowledge, use it, it is a complete infringement and moreover they are not allowed to market or to sell or to produce the product in large scale and commercialize it without your consent that is a complete infringement right now what are these remedies ma'am you've spoken all these are infringement now what how what do i do when i get infringed if if i file for a patent and somebody is infringed or copyright or trademark how do i protect in fact even on the design aspects how will i protect myself if i come up with a very exclusive design for a textile or for a clothing line as such how do i protect myself 
the there is one simple thing only protection can be given if you do your registrations without registrations there is no protection available for you how many hour years you are using it you have to prove it in the court of law it becomes even more cumbersome and tedious so registration is a must and the remedy here it is definitely it is by filing an infringement suit for any of these about the blanket remedy is always filing an infringement suit be it for trademarks or copyrights or patents or designs in the appropriate courts where there is the uh, jurisdiction lies or the cause of action arises in those appropriate courts you have to file for an infringement suit i would tell you a very simple example of how people are benefiting out of this infringement suit see amazon actually uh, to a large uh, extent uses vendors products and they promote their products um uh, there was a latest case law where there were two ladies who were doing uh, i think they were selling a product about i think something to do with cooking or something i'm not able to recollect the exact uh, brief of the case they sued amazon because they amazon was infringing on them on the way they were doing the product or something these were two ladies who were registered who were doing things from their home as such like home entrepreneurs i would say so they went all right and they said we would file for infringement and believe me they won it so that is the power of your registration to protect your ownership same way there was a case where starbucks is a uh, international chain and there was somebody in punjab who was using the similar name of a concept called as frappuccino frappuccino is only attached to starbucks and not to anybody else but the coffee shop in punjab was using the name frappuccino they used it in a very different way some combination they were sued and believe me starbucks won so this is the power of a brand or the power of an ownership or the registration which is given please understand it is not just registering it is also voicing out when the time comes you say it's okay let somebody use it i am not bothered if you are like that then you lose your exclusive right so you should also have the uh, guts to go over and to ensure that all these things are being protected by giving the exclusivity that's how your uh, infringements can be uh, you can uh, protect against infringement only once your exclusivity is been given now the next is about the strategies here how you need to uh, protect and all that this is something on the legal aspects which generally professionals guide you on how to go about even before a filing is done what is the industry you have to take in under which class is it under copyright or is it under patent or trademarks there's always confusions so the legal uh, people will help you the lawyers who are in this field or agents who are in this field will only be able to guide you and handle you to give you certain protections and also what are the challenges in the current market what will go what will not go because we are so used to and we know that certain products will go certain products will not go this mark will work this will not work so i think i have taken um, sorry it is uh, i have run a little bit late uh, sorry about that i think with that we have come to the conclusion and in case any of you all have any uh, uh doubts please feel free to clarify with me and thank you once again i hope this session was useful to one and all present hello yes ma'am it was a wonderful session seriously um dear participants if you have any clarifications or any uh, doubts you can clarify with ma'am uh, good evening subhitra ma'am good evening uh, ma'am i just have a doubt uh, so we are filing a patent and uh, it is like it is published right but is that the final state or we came to know that there is also a grant that has to go along with that no ma'am it is a cumbersome process because patent as such you know there are technical aspects which are evolved as such so it doesn't mean once publication is through your patent is granted as such 
So okay. there will be other processes which are involved after that, which are technical process like clarifications, hearings. You have to go present yourself. These technical aspects also have to be dealt with because, uh, for example, there are a lot of universities I know that they go ahead, individuals go ahead and file for patent as such. Once even after they go through or sail through the patent aspects and they get the patent for themselves, after that, they don't know what to do. See, it is a combined area. Once you get your registration and your ownerships for various um, uh, uh, areas, like for in patent as such, you should know how to develop it into a business and how to make it viable for you and how to commercialize aspect. That commercialization aspect to guide you, all these things, you require the support of a professional. Otherwise, it gets very tedious, ma'am. Okay, ma'am. Uh, but uh, do we get to know about this somewhere uh, or uh, where we can authentically tell that this is the path because uh, to be on frank note like some of uh, the agents they mislead us uh, right. so is there any authenticated pathway where we can see and we can know what actually the proce process is Mom, there is, you have to first understand there is no uh, authenticated pathway as such. It is only to the guiding through the right source. Like the way, ma'am, we have number of doctors today in our country. We should know which doctor we have to go to. Otherwise, we are misleaded, right? The diagnosis itself goes wrong. Yes, yes, exactly. So you should have the expert opinions or people who have got prior practice who have been very clear cutly. See, once you get into the system, it is very difficult for you to see whether this is the way, is it right or this is right, this is wrong. Because you are also new, you would not know, you're not the expert person. You have handled it, handed over this to a particular agent. Please understand, when it comes with patent, the agents are completely different. For each area, there is an agent where agent has to be specialized. So, for example, if it is on science or pharmaceuticals, that agent has to be specialized on that area. A blanket agent saying, I'm a patent agent, I can do all, will not work. So even if it is going to be on some process oriented on technical aspects, say in fact in the aspects of AI, which has been driven to a large extent today, the agent has to know the technicality or the subject matter expertise. Otherwise, it's very difficult for them to go into the intricacies and to sort out your application rightly before the forum. Okay, ma'am. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, the session was really great. And we came to know about many things. Uh, so it was like IPR was totally uh, a blank note for us. But uh, through this session, we learned many concepts about it. Thank you so much for the session. Thank you. Thank you. I'm very glad and I'm very happy to share this awareness. And uh, Madam, I have one question. Ma yes, please. Ma'am, uh, what is the difference between utility model and uh, the industrial design, ma'am? Sir, as I told you, utility model comes only on the aspects of patent. When you're giving a patent, sir, utility model comes only in patenting. If there is an invention which is new, say, for example, if you're discovering a machine which is completely new and the way it runs or the process it goes through and the product is coming out of it is completely new. If it is a completely new invention, then utility model will apply, sir. In Under design SAC, it is only the novelty grace period which is given, sir. It is not, it is not for all industrial design, sir. Okay, ma'am. Ma what is the duration for utility model? Uh, as you said, uh, for pattern, it is 20 years. Uh, for utility, ma'am, uh, what will be the duration? I think it, if I'm right, it's about 6 to 12 years, sir. Okay, okay, ma'am. Okay. Thank you, ma'am. Yes. yes, sir. Yes, sir. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. Welcome. Do we have any other questions? We are participants. If you have any questions, you can clarify it. Or uh, shall we wind up the session? Can we wind up the session, ma'am? Sure, sure.
Ma'am, uh, I have one question. Like, uh, in, uh, can you please suggest uh, for the fashion designers or the people into the textile? Uh, the Sorry, ma'am, I, I lost you. I lost you. Can you repeat the question? Am I audible, ma'am? Yes, now. Uh, yes, ma'am. the fashion designer or the people who are into the textile, like, uh, can you please suggest uh, a, what kind of... Uh, in what, uh, how can we proceed for doing patenting? Uh, which are the areas that would be feasible for us? It's an example. Uh, Ma'am, if it is going to be textiles and fashion, I will uh, be, uh, it is like you, I have to guide you all with, because that itself is, com it's a complete session in total where we talk and give you the awareness on what aspects. So it is not on the aspects of patents or anything. Now the question is always falls whether copyright or under designs act. So there are certain case laws which, are there which will help us it differs from case to case basis so there is no blanket protection where i can tell you that copyright definitely or industrial design definitely certain things if there is only originality which has been preserved and you don't want to commercialize it then copyright will be a best aspect if there is anything beyond on commercialization scale then you have to get into the designs act and it is also all registrations under the ipr as such has to be done in a combination of classes, not under one class. If you don't do under a combination of classes, it does not become airtight for you. Is there any other question? Yep, participants. Uh, I would also like to share that uh, we are in the process of applying a GI for uh, Malay Pundu, Mom. Okay. So the, the process that you have explained about GI was really was useful. And we are in the process of helping the farmers regarding uh, exporting Kodikanal uh, Malay Pundu. Just I would like to uh, register. Thank you so much. It's, it's fantastic, ma'am. And in case if you have any queries on that or if you like our any kind of uh, assistance, we'll be very glad to take it forward as well. Sure, ma'am. Thank you. Thank you for this. Any other questions, participants? Um, uh, ma'am, I have one question, ma'am. Yes, sir. Uh, ma'am, uh, if you see, ma'am, for patent, uh, as you said, it is 20 years, ma'am. So once after the completion of the 20 years, so it will come to the public or we can go for any other, uh, uh, this IPR, ma'am. No, no, sir. Once it is patent is given to you after 20 years, again, I think there is a mechanism of uh, uh, the ownership getting uh, renewed or things like that. So... Th that I have to look into in detail and I will also get back to you. Okay, okay, ma'am. Fine, ma'am. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. Welcome, welcome, sir. So, um, I think there is, you would like some, some of you all have asked for the email ID. I'll just type it out and send it. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you for this wonderful session from the side of SRM ISG Ramapura. Uh, Welcome, ma'am. It, uh, it was indeed an honor and uh, I thank once again all of you all for giving this opportunity and I'm very happy that so many of you all have benefited because the whole aim for AKM as such is creating awareness and that's how we have started on a lot of, no lot of things, especially the newsletter lottery and Quixie. So probably I will also send across those links where you all can freely subscribe and it will be very, very informative for you all. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you so much, ma'am. So I guess like we can wind up the session. Uh, sure. Um, Satyanarayanan, you can propose a vote of thanks now. Okay, thank you, ma'am. Uh, good evening, all. 
it gives an immense pleasure to deliver the vote of thanks for this program. I would like to thank our chief guest, Ms. Subhadra Mailsami, ma'am, partner of uh, A.K. Mailsami Associates, uh, who shared the various important information on trademarks, copyrights, infragments in IPR. And I also extend my thank to Ms. Savitri Suresh Babu, senior associate, who helped me to contact Subhadra Mailsami, ma'am. Thank you, ma'am. I would like to thank all the participants who joined in this evening session. I extend my thank to my chairman, dean, and all the faculties of SRM Institute of Science and Technology, Ramabura, for their support in conducting the event. Last but not least, I thank all of them joined with us in this evening session. Thank you, everyone. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Dear Thank participants, you. we'll meet for tomorrow's session at the same time. Thank you all. Thank you all. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am.